Hi everyone, for this video I have chosen this picture. This is from the Botanical Affirmations Coloring Book by Dominique Stoper. And uh, I wanted to have a little go at some aspects of this picture. I won't be doing the whole page, there's a lot going on here. Now what I thought would be fun to do is the bird, because I know that you know we can talk about how to make the feathers look look um, nice and things like that. And I might do the tree trunk as well, because I just enjoy doing them. Now I have chosen my Arteza Expert Pencils for this page. Now this is printed on Amazon paper, which is thin like, um, like photocopy paper. And although I don't have a problem colouring on it with any of my pencils, I do find um, the Arteza experts slide nicely across the paper. They're not too slick, but because they're not too sharp, they don't dent the paper. Whereas a really sharp pencil, like say a Prismacolor Very Thin or even a Black Widow, if it was sharpened to a point, it might sort of damage the paper slightly. So I find something that's not quite so sharp is good. So I'm going to start, I think, by um, doing this tree trunk. So I'm going to stay zoomed out for a moment. And what I'm going to do is use several shades of colour to just show you how I am going to do it. I'm going to start with my darkest brown, um, a dark brown. I think I'm going to use the espresso brown. Now, mine is a bit blunt. I'm just grabbing my pencil sharpener. I'm going to just give it a little sharpen. See, I don't want it really thick point. I just want it a little, oops, a little point like that so that... It's sharp enough to stay in the lines, but it's not going to poke a hole in my paper. And I'm going to go on the edge here, on the edge of the tree trunk. Now, Dominica has shaded in this for us, which is nice and helpful of her. So we know exactly where to go in with our darker colour. And the idea of colouring... Um, a darker bit along the edge, and I will do it on both sides, but not so much on the far side, um, is to show um, that the trunk is rounded, because obviously it's drawn in quite a flat way, That's uh, apart from these lines to sort of help us. But if we can shade it with our pencils, we can emphasise that even more. And uh, what I'm going to do with these knots is do them a little bit darker in the bottom and then lighter as we come out so it looks like there's a little deep hole in the center but anyway what we can do with our colors is overemphasize that shape and make it look more rounded I and mean, we can't get i mean my son was saying to me oh mum it doesn't look 3d you can't you know compared to my game minecraft everything's really 3d it doesn't really look it and i'm like well no but i'm not living in a minecraft world am i i'm just trying to pencil some things in so you can see my line is fairly thick going down there and on this side i'm just going to do a really thin touch i still want it to try to make it look three-dimensional but I'm not going to make it as dark on this side. I have to be a little bit careful because we've got lots of leaves and details near the bottom. So that's my darkest brown and now I'm going to go a little lighter. Now I'm going to go considerably lighter and I'm just going to sharpen this one as well. And this is the cinnamon. So if you have a look um, I don't know how well you can see. You can see it's a much lighter brown. I'm going to go slightly over the top of what I have done already in a light layer. And then take the cinnamon towards the centre, lightening as I go. So what I am doing is I'm applying more layers near to the outside edge of the tree. And then putting less as we go towards the centre. I'm not going to leave white paper completely. I don't think this is a shiny tree in the same way as we would do if it was metallic. But uh, we can certainly reduce our layers and make it a little lighter down the centre of the trunk. Just to try and help it look as though it's catching the light. And we need to try and keep that fairly consistent down the middle. But we have to remember that our trunk isn't straight, it's slanted, so we need to be aware of that as we go down. So I'm going over this darker edge, 
and then lightening as I go to the middle. So what I do is I reduce my pressure on the pencil a little bit as well as doing less layers as I go down. So uh, working through, I am expecting a phone call so I suspect my phone will ring at some point. So I try, I'm trying to edit out my phone ringing now. It's, uh, my editing skills are not brilliant. I'm hoping that it's working okay. And uh, so I come back and say, sorry, my phone rang and hopefully you didn't notice. But it, I do have to tell you because I sort of lose my flow of speech. Got no idea what I was talking about. It'd be a bit odd if I came back and just started talking about something completely different. I know I'm not very good for always sticking and finishing the point I'm making, but that that would be a little mad, wouldn't it? <laughs> just going to go over this knot a little bit. So, um, yeah, I have had a call already this morning, and a poor lady phoned me up. Um, I was inquiring about a, a water softener. It's really not very exciting. And um, I accidentally put my phone number in my inquiry form when I filled out the um, the website. It didn't matter, but I just um, filled in my um, my search engine fills in my details automatically. I didn't realise my phone number was there, so she rang me, and I was like, "How did you get my phone number?" She went, "It was on the form you sent me." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> Whoops. I said, oh, it's okay. But we had a nice long chat and I got off the subject lots of times, poor lady. She's probably trying to do her job and phone people up and there I am chattering on about all sorts of nonsense. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just going back along the edges now to just darken the areas that I want a little bit darker. Now I've done my sort of basic bit, like around the edge of the knot here, I'm just going to put a darker bit there. So anyway, she uh, she was very nice, but unfortunately we don't have room to put in one of their water softeners in our kitchen at the moment just because of the way it is set out. But I am thinking I'm saving up to having a refurb, so uh, when we uh, do that we'll make sure we make room for one. But I just wanted to sort of check whether they would work to start with in our area. because. I was recommended one by my sister, but she lives in a different area of the country. And when I spoke to the company about it, they sent me to a different company who were local. So I'm not sure theirs would have worked for us. But uh, anyway, there we go. There's the tree. I'm going to zoom in and do the bird. And as I zoom in, you'll be able to see the tree better as to what I have been doing. Now, obviously, um, it's got, there were some little bits of tree here that I haven't done, but I shall do those in a similar way by using my darker espresso brown. Sorry. Oh, that wasn't very clever, was it? My darker espresso brown to do the um, underneath. So the bit that's lowest would be moist in the shadow there. And then any bits that Dominique has marked for me, I will cover over and uh, do a little bit on each side with that and then grab the lighter brown, the cinnamon that I was using and do a similar thing. So we still get a bit of a shine on that bit, do you see? Right, so let's move on to our bird. Now I wasn't sure what colour to do our little bird. Um, I'm, I'm still a little bit unsure to be honest. I was thinking browns, but the browns in this set were a little bit red for uh, for my liking i'm just having a quick look at what i've got on my other layer no purples no i don't think so i think i'm going to do them gray grays and blacks maybe so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to start <coughs> excuse me with the elephant gray i don't know oh, can you see that oh. and uh, um just um, do a light layer all over to start with and this is making me look at the bird and think about where I'm going to need lighter and darker applications of colour. It's quite rough but I'm going to try and get it in the direction of the feathers so they're sort of going in this direction aren't they? 
You may not even really be able to see very much grey at the moment. In this nice, very poor light today. Um, I've obviously got my lamp on, and um, I'm going to leave that with the elephant grey. I'm going to go to a darker one because it's not really very dark, it's a little bit brownish, which I like. I'm going to move on to the pewter grey. Now, this is really sharp, so I'm going to be a bit careful with it. I know it's dark today, we had um, lots of um, fog this morning, so I'm just going to go around this flower with a dark layer to start with. And I'm going to think about what I'm doing. I'm going to go darker here, at the bottom of the feather, and then at the top two here, and then leave this sort of lighter area in the middle. So it sort of looks like it's sort of shiny. So I hope that works. Oops. So I'm going to do the same with these. So I just got a little distracted by checking. I was trying to be sneaky. It didn't really work. And my son just sent me a message on Discord. So I was just checking it. So I was um, asked him to tell me he got to school safely because it was foggy. And uh, he said, oh, I'll tell you at lunchtime. I said, oh. Sadly, I think I would have heard by then had anything nasty happened. But anyway, he's just been in touch with me because he's got... A trip tomorrow, a field trip for his geology, and I didn't know about it until this morning, so I just told him about it, I don't know if he'd forgotten. I'm going to put quite a dark area in here, particularly where it touches the other feathers, Make it fade it a little bit towards the middle. So on these, doing a darker bit here, at the top of this sort of wing area, and at the ends, and a bit lighter in the middle. We'll do the same here, so a bit darker here and here. Now, D Dominique Stopa is um, a really lovely artist. Um, check out her Instagram and her, I think, yeah, she's got a website, she's got an online shop. She does lino printing as well as selling her colouring books. She made these during lockdown because she couldn't run her business. She decided to go into business just before um, we, the whole nation went into lockdown, which is very unfortunate timing. I'm going to start doing some lines. And um, she was going to run an art school um, where she was teaching lino printing. So she rented a workshop. And then uh, during lockdown, she uh, had a change of mind. And uh, she uh, made some colouring books, which she put up for sale on Amazon. And she sent me this copy, um, which was very kind of her, to uh, sort of reveal my website. But I've been colouring in it because it's really nice. And it's very different. I'd said to her, you know, this was the first non-Johanna Basford colouring book I had. And uh, I did warn her that I only ever coloured Johanna Basford books. And she said, that's fine. But I said I did like the affirmations. I don't know if you can see there's an affirmation. Just to put there. My thoughts become my reality. I like the affirmation idea. And I also like the botanical um, theme. So uh, she, sent, she said, OK, I'll send you one. And she sent me two. That was really kind of her. And on the face, we haven't got these line feathers, we've just got dots. I'm going to, what should I do? I think I'm going to do some lines, but much smaller. Much smaller little feathery lines. So anyway, um, I really, uh, I reviewed it and I've started doing some colouring in both of the books actually. They're really nice. But she's um, now, instead of doing workshops, she's got a shop. So as well as selling her own colouring books, she sells the lino prints that she makes and they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, I've got one here actually somewhere. And uh, she's got Christmas cards for sale which are so sweet. I bought some. The only thing is she's in Ireland and so I had to pay um, international shipping but I didn't mind. It was worth it. They're really gorgeous um, cards. Um, now I'm going to go in with a slightly darker colour. We have got a charcoal grey, which is almost black. I'm going to sharpen it and I'm just going to do some more little feather-like lines on the bird. So I've sharpened it fairly sharp, but I'm being quite careful. Again, you know, with this paper. I need to respect the paper because it's uh, quite thin. But I think just 
adding in more lines helps to give a more textural look to our little bird who is just a little darling isn't he i don't know what type of bird he is supposed to be um coloring him gray means he really isn't a bird we don't really have a small gray bird in the uk but we have ones with much more complex colors like the um the grey tits or the blue tits or the even the robin and things is probably a sparrow or a dunnock which are brown but I just wanted him to look different to the tree which is brown because he's the star of our show isn't he and you think he's just cute he needs to stand out so uh, you can see I'm just doing these lines it's so relaxing just doing lines I can see why people like doing um, stippling sort of technique it is relaxing but I think I would find it a little bit too take too long I get anxious to finish things so uh, I think it'd be tricky now for the rest of this picture I'm going to probably do quite a pale blue sky um, I don't know what we've got actually in these Artezas colour wise for sky I think that's enough for him but I do need to do his legs and beak and I'm going to do them in this same colour, this the charcoal grey. I'm going to do a light layer to start with and have a think. I think it's going to be darker here underneath. And then a little bit lighter on the top bit like that. Where it might just catch the light. I'm going to do the feet the same way. So... We're quite grey and and brown at the minute, so I'm just going to um, remove my layer from my pencils and have a little look. Now I'm thinking my flowers, as I say, the sky light blue, I think I'm going to do it this colour. This is called um, Robin Egg Blue. It's a really nice pale blue. I'm going to do the sky that colour. I realise we've got these stars as if it's night. I'm going to not make them night. I'm going to make them magical. And I'm going to use some sparkly glitter pen of some colour or other. I'm not sure what. I might do them silver or gold, but it's a bit boring. I might do them some sort of blues or purples or something to make it look magic. So that's going to be my sky. I'm not going to show you me colour the sky now. A tip. Down here... We have uh, tiny leaves, lots of them. Colour over them all with your sky. Just go over it whoosh, and your stars. And then when you do these leaves, choose a dark colour and just do those details on top of your blue. Much quicker, much easier. And the stars as well. That's assuming you've got a gel pen or a paint pen because it will write over the top of the um, blue. And because this blue um, is light, you'll still see them through it. It would be nice and easy. That's a tip for that. I'm going to use a darkish green for this. Not too dark. And then a lighter one for this, I think. And the flowers, I think I'm looking at some nice pretty pinks. But I'm wondering, just looking at my artesas here, there's some really nice... Um, see, I'm thinking maybe like this flamingo pink. Something like that. Let's have a go. And which one should we do this one? So I'm just going to go over the whole flower lightly, not the centre, because the centre is a little bit different. Oh, I've just gone over a bit that's supposed to be sky. Hold on me. There. There we go, never mind. And so for each petal I'm going to go a little bit from the centre and then light out outwards towards the edge. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on each of these flowers because they're very pretty. You could just do it so that it was one colour. And I'm going to do the same around the centre part so that we've got a little bit of definition. Now in that centre we've got lots of little circle, not necessarily circles, but lots of little shapes. Um, what colour? I'm thinking I want to add more colour into this picture because we've got grey, we've got brown, we've got blue. So I'm thinking I might go into the centre of those um, with this uh, lilac colour. And uh, 
actually it's not really dark enough for me that's that looks too pink now let's go in with the amethyst purple I know I use it a lot it's a really pretty shade now if you don't have the um, Arteza um, Prismacolor Premier would be a good um, alternative option um, because they are um, nice and slidey on the paper for want of a better word you could also use um, what else would be similar mm, Castle Arts would probably work quite well they're not quite the same but I think they would work um, yeah I think that would, uh, would do the job and uh, I'm sure polychromos would work okay but they're a little bit harder I wouldn't use anything mega hard I wouldn't use Erga Soft or Anything like that. I'm just going over these stalks now because I coloured over them in pink when I was doing the flower centre so I'm just redefining them in this purple and what I think I am going to do is get a bit of white um, here is my um, Sakura jelly roll just do a few dots it just helps to lift it a little bit Let's hope they show up sometimes um, they disappear into the pencil depends on the shade there we go I think that looks I'm quite happy with that um, so that's that's that really so that's all my um, tips on that page so um, I'm gonna um, finish it at some point but I hope you've um, found that useful and uh, I've had fun so I hope you have too Thank you so much for watching and happy colouring.